finally, some good main character. Before we hop into this discussion on Jujutsu Kaisen, please do me a favor, leave your thoughts on the series in the comments down below, leave a like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, let's get into it. What's up guys, I'm Brother Pencil here, and here we are to discuss Jujutsu Kaisen. So yes, I finally started reading it, I'm about 112 chapters deep, and I was supposed to stop myself. I was supposed to stop myself about halfway through the series. However, I couldn't. I picked up the series, and I ravenously consumed it. I ravenously, ugh, I ravenously consumed it more than I ravenously consumed Fire Force. So I literally stopped Fire Force and went and read an entirely different manga just for no, for no real reason. I just did. Read the entirety of quintessential quintuplets right in the middle of Fire Force because why not? But then I was like, you know what? I might as well read Jujutsu Kaisen. I'm seeing some interesting stuff. Daddy Fat Snaps dropped a rap on it. I might as well go ahead and read it. So I did. And I'm 112 chapters deep. I'm almost caught up. And I really, 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 really like the show. Or the manga. Or the whatever you want to call it. But why? Why do I like it so much? I have to say. You know what? Let me... No, I'm going to say it. This show has some of the most human characters that I've seen in a minute. And... That's impressive, at least for me as a writer, or as a creator in general. Like, when I look at certain, this is weird to say, when I look at content and go to critique it, typically one of the main things I will critique it on is the lack of humanity within the characters. Whether that be a lack of human fear, a lack of human desire, a lack of something. That's typically why you'll find me decrying certain series and their characters, because I feel like there's a certain lack of humanity to them. Like, these don't feel like real people. And while that's fine, because of course these aren't real people, these are just characters made up, one of the things I will constantly praise about a series whenever I feel like it has it is the humanity within their characters. And I'll say this readily, that Jujutsu Kaisen has some of the most human characters that I've seen in a minute. In a minute minute, especially for a shonen manga. I'm very, very impressed with what this managed to do. And honestly, I'm not going to go too in depth. I'm not going to talk that much about the story. I'm not going to talk that much about the characters. This is just to let you know I've been reading it and I really, really like it. And um, you're probably going to get some sort of month themed around it once I finally catch up and once I finally probably reread it again just to get some better insight on it. And yes, there are some abilities in this series that make me lose my mind. But regardless of that, specifically the characters themselves, what I love so much about this cast is that. Every single person, it feels like, even if they don't get as much screen time, if they don't get much, I feel like there's a world outside of the main world. There's a world that I can go back to. There's a world that I could read a manga on almost every single one of these characters, all of their journeys, all their backstories, because they're that well-written, they're that in-depth. The author knows how to give us just enough about this character to be like, yes, I understand their motivations. Yes, I see what they do. Yes, I like their ability. Yeah, I... I find myself constantly saying yes with this series, rather than being like, oh, this is bad, oh, this is worse, or oh, this is just okay. I find myself saying yes, I agree with these characters' motivations, I understand them, I respect them, I can see why someone would go down this path. And this is, for the most part, completely with all our protagonists. I understand pretty much every single one of our protagonists' motivations, their backstories, everything I need to know about them to support them or to rock with them as a protagonist, whether they be the main one or the side ones, I can rock with it. It's perfect. I love it. And honestly, let me just start naming off some favorite characters. Itadori. I like him a lot. Like, shockingly enough, a lot of people, at least the people who, my friends who have read the manga before I did, thought I wouldn't like Itadori because they said he reminds, they said they, he, Itadori reminds them a lot of someone like Naruto or Midoriya. But the thing I like a lot about Itadori the most in comparison to someone like Midoriya, though I do like Naruto for these same reasons too, is that his morals and his stagnation in his ideology is the exact opposite. He has no stagnation. Itadori is constantly developing and growing the more and more he evolves into the world. Like, chapter 1 Itadori versus just chapter 50 Itadori are two completely different characters in terms of moral ideology, and it's interesting to track that growth. So I like that. I like characters that, while they may not change on a fundamental level, they may have a lot of the same personalities, a lot of the same traits, you can see how they've changed specifically and how they've grown specifically and how every single piece fits together, and I like that. Another favorite character of mine, Toto. Toto may be, darn it, you know, I, I hate to say it. Y'all know who my favorite character in the series is. I can't, I can't, Gojo, how'd you do it, man? How'd you do it? Like, I looked at this man, and you know what went through my mind. I saw Kakashi reincarnated, like, no hesitancy. The blindfold over the eye, well, mainly just part of the face being covered by something, the eyes being special, all of that. But gosh darn it, here's the thing. If, if Gojo wasn't as well written as he was, 
I would be extremely mad with his type of character. Let me just leave it at that. I'm definitely going to talk about Gojo in his own video because he earned it. He earned it so far and I'm not even caught up yet. So I'm not even going to say anything about it because I don't want to accidentally spoil anything for anybody about any of these characters. But just say, I like him a lot. Toto? Toto, my boy. <laughs> a bro, that's all I need. Bro, my man. Why, has, why isn't he here in the current arc? Please let him show up in the current arc. Like, I know he, it, I'm not watching the anime, obviously. I, I read manga preferably. I don't know. I just have a preference towards manga instead of anime. But he hasn't shown up for a minute. Darn it, I want him back. He's fantastic. The class, I love his ability. There's, there's just... I actually finally understand that bar in the DPS route. There's just so many things I like. And those are just three characters off the top of my head. And yo, shockingly enough, shout out to the female characters. I, like, legitimately, I'm fully impressed by darn near every single one of them and while i do admit in terms of the male characters they are lacking in terms of like things to be things that they've gotten done but in terms of what they've done it's still very very good and a lot better than what i expect for your average shonen manga it's doing great notable mentions nobara i actually really really like nobara mainly because of her ability her ability is extremely interesting to me i like Mei for what she's been doing recently i like maki just because maki is a, a legend and it's cool i i like what the author's doing here but I can't see I don't this is supposed to be a non-spoiler video It's just supposed to be what I like and what I don't like about the series summed up really quick So I won't go into detail. I'll just say let me just say I like these characters. They're great fantastic for the plot itself I actually really really like it. I don't know. It's a Not the plot itself. Let me say the world. I think the mangaka was smart because he had his cake and he ate it too Now what do I mean? He wanted the high school setting because that's obviously the most easy thing to write for. Put a, put some kids in high school and there you're good to go. It relates to your common audience that's going to be reading your manga. Everyone's going to love it. Fantastic. However, he knew about the My Hero Academia problem. Where if you set a, if you set a cast in high school and put them in high school age, you have to make a whole bunch of characters that people are going to get attached to that are really never going to be allowed to do anything because there are too many characters. So that's the main issue I have with My Hero Academia a lot of the time where... I feel like there are too many characters that Horikoshi can't do enough with because he just simply doesn't have enough time to do enough with them. However, what the mangaka managed to do with his specific, with his specific cast is he managed to get the numbers down small. We have three main characters in our first year class, and that's about it. And we have one teacher, and we have it's a small condensed cast of characters that allowed the mangaka to flesh them all out individually and give us reasonings for all of their existences and why they're here and a reason for us to support them and he's managed to for the most part go out screen time mostly evenly though i will admit megami and itadori get most of it nobara sort of left in the dust a lot of the time but i like it all that fantastic for the villains this is weird usually i say the villains are the strongest point in, in a certain manga, usually, I think the My Hero Academia villains are better. I think uh, I love a lot of Dragon Ball villains. I love a lot of villains just in general from my fiction, all right? I think villains are cool. But the thing is, I think the heroes actually drastically, like, out-characterize the villains. And I think it's because the villains, due to what they are, I'm not going to go very much in depth in that, but due to what they are, they're inherently supposed to be more mysterious and thus less attachable. Like, the deepest connection I ever felt to any of the villains was when one of them was just happy that they were learning to love something that they were enjoying themselves and that's the closest i got but other than that villains they have sort of basic motivations so far maybe there's gonna be more development there's been a twist recently that explains a lot and also intrigues me a lot but then makes me question the existence of an entire arc and why something wasn't in that arc but that's neither here nor there i think the villains they're all right some of them are good like they're all well designed i love all their abilities but in terms of characters like legitimate full-on characters i don't think I think they could do better. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I think they could do better. I think the manga could put a lot of fuel into his protagonist, which is good since we're following them most of the time. But I do wish put a little bit more, put a little bit more dibble dabble into the villains. And let me see. Oh, cursed energy. I really, really like that as a power system. And I'm very, I'm very peculiar with my power systems. Like I'm fine if they're like bland, generic, just oh, I need a cheat key system, I need a chakra system, I need a magic system, just because you know I gotta have superpowers somehow. But what I like, and this is mainly because I'm reading the volume technical version, 
I don't, I like it that the mangaka has clearly thought through all these abilities and how they would interact with each other because there are not that many of them. Like the curse energy basically gives every single person their own unique power system, very much like Nen, except just like Nen, there are certain guidelines. Is this as in depth or as specific or as solid as Nen? No. However, it is still very, very good in comparison to a lot of power systems. And honestly, unless I'm mistaken, it hasn't broken its rules once just yet. It's expanding the rules, it's bending the rules, but other than that, perfectly fine. Now, what do I not like? Because that's, that's a whole ton of stuff I like. I like the protagonist, I think the villains are pretty good. I just wish they could do better. And I think the curse energy system and the world is all very, very good. What do I not like? I, I sort of... <sighs> What, while death is a very important part of life because it is the opposite of life. It happens a lot. However, due to my own idiocy, I managed to spoil myself on some deaths just by pure accident. I saw a character on the wiki. Never, I ne if you're ever reading a manga, never look up anything. Never look up anything. Never, never put a character's name into Google unless you're caught up. Please, don't make my mistake. I ruined, my, I ruined Jujutsu Kaisen for this. I ruined myself on Jujutsu Kaisen for this. And I ruined Demon Slayer for myself like this. Don't do it, don't do it, catch up, and then you can Google the character designs, because just don't do it. But regardless of that, even beforehand, even before I spoiled myself on some death, I think Mangaka has a too, not necessarily a too liberal use of, oh, I gotta kill this character to develop another character, but that's the thing. I'm sort of able to read character deaths a lot easier than I should, at least in my mind, if I want, if the Mangaka wants them to have emotional impact. And that's the thing, that's the thing that always becomes subjective about how a mangaka writes or how anyone writes. Is this character death supposed to hurt me or is it supposed to work for the characters? Preferably you would want to do both when you're an author. You want to make the reader feel bad and you want to make the characters feel bad. But for the moment, at least every single death that's happened in Jujutsu Kaisen, it's been heavily telegraphed by either the characters themselves or the world around the characters. And I don't think that's much of a strength because as like... It sucks the impact out of the death itself. However, I'll admit every single death has done good for a character that the death has affected. So that's really it. That's the only problem I have with Jujutsu Kaisen. And honestly, let me think. Nah, I can't really critique the art. There are some times where I wish the art was a bit more detailed. Like, I can definitely see sketch lines, but I'm not sure if that's on purpose, if that's accidental. Like, it's a toss-up. I'm not really sure whether or not I should critique the art or not, but that's about it. That's the only issue. The deaths are a bit too telegraphed. Other than that, I think everything else is cool. And yes, I'm going to talk about it more in depth. However, it is almost March. So, Jujutsu Kaisen, I'm sorry, you're going to have to wait. Because there's something I've been holding off for months at this point. After reading another certain manga that I've been told to read for a long, long time. But other than that, yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen, pretty fire. Pretty fire. What do you guys think about it? I think it's a good series. I recommend it. I see why it's hot stuff. Do I like it more than My Hero Academia? I... I think at the moment, My Hero Academia has more characters I'm invested in, but that's probably because it's been going on for twice as long as Jujutsu Kaisen. So I'll give it some time. At the moment, I may do a comparison video on the two series, because I think they both are very similar. They have very similar both strengths and weaknesses. But yeah, I'll probably talk about them later in the future. But other than that, that's all I have to say. Please tell me what you guys think about Jujutsu Kaisen in the comment section down below. And thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is That Guy with a Pencil, writing off.